Hey, welcome back. A good friend asked me for a favor. He's a chef and the chef's jacket has these odd style buttons with the ball and the large disc in the back. And as it seems, you can only get them in plastic. They are injection molded and not, not very nice. So he asked me if I could make him the same style of button out of metal. I, I made a first prototype in aluminium and this seems to work. This is a, this is a, a ball milled. I milled this on, on a milling machine using the rotary table. And this seems to work quite nice. I have some, some blemishes on there and it's not finished at all, but the general idea works. So what I want to do is walk you through the process of turning the rough shape, machining the ball on the milling machine, and then uh, doing all the finish work. The reason I'm not doing it on the lathe, I tried it with a form tool. I, I milled a form tool in tool steel and I tried to plunge the whole ball shape in one try. And this diameter back here, this is only five millimeters and it just snapped off under the sheer cutting force. So that's not, that's too much. I don't have a ball turner for my, for my Amco lathe, still not. So I remembered the technique of using a boring head and a rotary table, two circular motions overlaid to each other that uh, Tom Lipton showed in his book, Sink or Swim, Metalworking, Metalworking Sink or Swim. That's the title of the book. There he showed this technique in quite a detail and I, I always wanted to try it, but I rarely have the need for a ball, to machine a ball shape. So let's, let's see how we do this. I laid out the rough dimensions back here. This is 18 millimeters. The ball has 12.7. In reality, it's more like 12.6, but we'll go for 12.7. And this shank here is uh, five millimeters. So that's the overall damage. So we're just going to hog out the rough shape on the lathe. Leave this diameter here 0.1 millimeter larger in diameter. So we have something to cut into when we finish it and see where this goes. That's how we prepare the blanks for ball milling. Uh, cutting, cutting the slot in back here, turning this to the OD that we need for the ball. Slightly oversized so we can take an actual finish cut. Do this on both sides of the, of the stock. And then we're off to the mill. We don't have a crazy high precision uh, for this for this job. We just want want it to be good, good enough. Okay, there we go. That's our first double ender. Now we can take it like this in a milling machine and mill the ball end. The idea behind making it as a double ender is to make two at a time and have something to hold on. Uh, I'm going to lose about six millimeters of stock between those two parts, but those six millimeter stock will allow me to make two. If I made only one, I also needed about six to eight millimeter extra stock to hold on. I cannot machine them from, from the stock, from the bar, because the OD does not, is not turned precisely and does not fit into the 5C collet I'm using on the mill. So that's a very good technique for parts like this.
there we go. It took about two and a half minutes to cut this ball, judging by, by the recording time on my camera. And the result is just marvelous. Um, this is just beautiful. Uh, diameter is 12.75. That's 50 micron oversize. I, I feel a little bit sloppy today, so we're just going to leave it like that. To be honest, this is way good enough. But the ball milling that way is, it, it's, it's beautiful. The crosshatch finish is just a, a thing of beauty. We will throw these parts in the vibratory tumbler once they are done. That's another one finished and I wanted to show you the, the two motions that are overlaid to each other. I retracted the tool at uh, 0.1 millimeter so we don't scratch it while we play around here. As you can see I have a carbide boring bar that's facing inward and it's cutting in this direction so I have to run the mill in reverse. have to keep that in mind when I turn it on otherwise I destroy the tool. And as you can see it, it barely nicks this diameter here and the other side goes through the center of the ball and at the same time this is rotating like this all in reality way faster of course part goes in the collet and to about this position here it's clamped and then I move my tool over to the outside position go down to my depth and I touch off on the end of the tool of the part this doesn't have to be super precise just reasonably close then I move in 0.1 millimeter this direction and we're good to cut Okay, you saw me spinning the indexing head, my hand cranking it and, and at the same time constantly down feeding very slowly on the quill of the machine until I hit my, my depth stop and then I just did a few rotations to clean up the ball shape. That's the overall setup. I have my Walter UTA80 indexing head held in the vise, set to, to an angle of 11 degrees plus a little bit. I will show you later how I, I calculated the necessary angle. And I have a 5C collar chuck mounted on here. 5C collar chuck is just a, a very convenient way to hold the work. The angle, the 11 degrees are needed so the cutting tool, when it spins, when it's on the side of the material, it clears the shank of the ball. Otherwise you would form a complete 360 degree sphere, but that would not hold on to anything and it would just drop off <laughs> and get flinged through the air and be annoying. So that's the reason why you tilt the spindle to, to make room for a shank. To round over the, the foot of this button, I need a form tool and I took a braced carbide parting tool my die grinder and a two millimeter diamond uh, grinding point and I'm just working the the shape into the face of, of the parting tool to create a 180 degree radius tool 
check your progress and after you're done you just hit the top top surface of the tool lightly on a on a diamond lap clean it up and you have a you have a, a carbide carbide radius tool all that's left after milling the ball is to take the parts and part them off so this goes pretty well in the sixth jaw chuck holding power is very good first we clean up this this tiny corner here where the ball meets with the shank Then we come in and partially cut it off. Then we change to our half round tool that we ground earlier with the die grinder. And we just eyeball it over the center of the remaining material cut the full radius until until this this section here cleans up completely and we switch back to our parting blade move back in position and part it off All that's left is to file off this, uh, this knob on the back. And now I'm not going to grind an angle, a leading angle on my standard parting blade because these thin high speed steel blades tend to wander off course if you grind uh, the leading edge back on, uh, on an angle. And that's all the waste I get by making two parts. Um, it's a reasonably low amount of waste. And all this goes quite fast. This is one of those projects that we don't want to make a science fair project out. We just... want to do a good job in a reasonable amount of time. Okay, while the parts are in the tumbler, we can talk about math, just for fun. We have to tilt the, the indexing head so the cutting tool can clear the shank of the ball. If you look at, the, at this uh, button here and the black ring, the O-ring around it, this is the, 
It's basically the path that the tool sweeps around the ball and the ball is rotating at the same time and creates this hemispherical shape. And this angle at this path here is tilted. That's what we need to calculate. And it's basically a triangle in here with the base length equals the diameter of the ball and the height equals half the diameter, i.e. the radius of the, of the shank of this ball. That gives us this triangle down here, 12.7, that's the diameter, and 2.5, that's the radius of the shank, because the shank is 5 millimeter in reality. Uh, do, some tr 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 do some math. Uh, 2.5 divided by 12.7 tangents of that equals alpha, that's the angle we have to tilt, of 11.13 degree. And that's the angle, this O-ring in this, in this demonstration here is, uh, oops, falling down, is compared to the center line of this whole part. You can also just draw it up in CAD and, and uh, figure out the dimensions there, but in this case it's quite easy to, to do the math by hand, so that, that's one way to do it. I had them about four hours in the tumbler and as you can see they, they came out quite even, have some scratches from just handling them. It's aluminium after all, soft as soft as can be. Uh, but apart from that uh, they are quite nice and I'm pretty sure he will be happy with them. And yes, this is quite a bit of work but not as much as you might expect. Um, all in all, each one of them took about maybe five to six minutes to make if you add it up. If I had to make only one, that would be quite some time for one. One would have taken about one or two hours. But making so many and having everything set up, uh, it goes, uh, goes rubber cuts. So, hope you enjoyed this. Thank you all for watching and see you next time.